I have a quick intro talk. I only have about 10 minutes to talk about this, so I'm going to try my best to pull all the information that we've learned in the past year in this, with this regard into this uh, quick, quick, quick introduction. So, Assurian missions. Assurian missions can be done, of course, from the software uh, perspective. Uh, but what goes into assurance, assuring critical systems and assuring missions as well is the, um, the hardware security component that also it plays a crucial role in making sure that, that the critical systems operate as they should. So we wanted to take a look at how to verify that a particular piece of microcontroller, a particular piece of microelectronics, belongs to a particular provider, particular producer, where it came from. We want to see if we can verify the provenance of a microchip, a CPU, an ARM, anything that you see in modern phones and modern um, electronics that contain some sort of computing capability. So, um, hence the project about the semiconductor foundry verification. Can we take a chip and tell if it's been produced at a particular foundry, or at the very least, tell if it has not been produced at the foundry that it's supposed to be produced at? So, um, so this project is done, was done in collaboration with uh, San Sandia, there are multiple units there. There is an embedded systems unit that we worked with. Um, uh, there is obviously the ECE department here at CMU that was involved in this as well, um, which the people there who worked on the uh, security side of, um, uh, of, of uh, hardware design, and uh, the Department of Justice uh, that provided some samples of counterfeit electronics. One of the motivating factors for this work is that we want to see if uh, by proving that, at least demonstrating that a microcontroller has not been produced at a particular foundry, we can probably deduce from that that it's been um, counterfeit, or at least there was some malicious activity that was involved in, in, in producing that, that chip. Uh, We've done some previous work on related to, 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 um, to figuring out algorithms that are embedded inside the microcontrollers, so that gave us uh, uh, the benefit of that, plus, of course, the um, uh, SCI's extensive code analysis um, that, that played some role in that project as well, on anomaly detection and things like that. So, um, all right. So, Chips that are produced uh, these days um, come from different foundries. They come from different manufacturing facilities. Some of these facilities are here in the United States. For example, Sandia has their own facility for manufacturing chips for their critical systems. Um, some of these chips are produced overseas. And the verification of where they came from, how they made it into critical systems, is an important uh, topic. Um, some of these chips may or may not be original, may or may not do the extra potentially undesirable uh, things, uh, or have undesirable things on them. Um, most of the chips that are consumer grade devices are not made in the United States, yet these chips end up in um, the DOD, they, they end up at the, uh, the Department of Energy for um, primarily because there is a limited um, ability for us to manufacture our own chips uh, for the, all the demand that we have um, within the DOD. So, of course, this introduces supply chain issues and uh, the subcontractor of subcontractor of subcontractor issues. And um, um, to make things worse, it's from the surface, it's kind of difficult to tell whether or not a particular chip is actually a counterfeit chip, if it's been um, properly manufactured or not. So let's take a look at what um, 
uh, what we did. So since we cannot tell this from the surface, we decided to see if we can take a chip apart, look inside a microcontroller, and see if we can tell that there are particular um, patterns that we can recognize that would identify a foundry where the chip came from. Okay, so, um, so for this we took a, a few chips apart, delayered them. What we found is that inside there are multiple layers of, uh, well, there is a, going to be a, um, uh, a, a NAND gate layer, this, the, the, uh, the transistor layer, and then multiple layers of um, and metal layers that are connecting the transistors together to create what they call uh, synthesized logic. And on top of the synthesized logic, there would be components that represent particular functionality. Think of, for example, USB functionality, um, uh, SATA functionality for hard drives, for example. So some sort of interfaces that interact, take that synthesized logic and interact with the rest of the world. So there are many, 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 many different components within the chip that are, <clears throat> uh, that combine the functionality of the chip, provide the functionality of the chip, and um, they're all manufactured while the chip is being made at a particular foundry where it was ordered at. Uh, there are some potential examples of what can be uh, a fabrication requirement at a fabrication facility. For example, no acute angles or angles, angles of non, um, 45 degree uh, multiples. Uh, the metal features would be a particular size. The metal layers would be either copper, copper or aluminum or something like this. So failing some of these finding some of these rules would indicate that there is a potential issue with the supply chain. So let's take a look. Um, I'm going to skip over this. Um, and um, this gives you a little bit of the introduction to what we did. So we, 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 uh, we took things apart using essentially the chemical um, and the mechanical etching. Uh, there is some plasma etching that is also involved in this. So one of the challenges was how do we take the chip apart? Once we take it, the chip apart, what do we see inside? Once we see what's inside, how do we see the patterns? How do we identify the patterns that indicate uh, that this was produced at a particular foundry? And finally, once we see those patterns, can we successfully identify a foundry where it came from? Or at least verify that that's been produced at a particular foundry as opposed to other foundries out there? Uh, let's take a look at some examples, some pictures here. So, so this is an example of what you would see, uh, one, one of the chips that we've uh, taken apart. Uh, the one on the left is the uh, pre-etching. You can still see wires on the sides connecting the pads out into the pins of the chip. You do not see the pins of the chip here, it's just the chip itself. And the wires are connecting the pads on the chip over to the pins on the, other, on, the, on the outside of the packaging. The uh, picture on the right is um, obviously now the wires are gone, the pads are exposed, and for that matter, the top glass layer has been removed. What we've learned from this is that it turns out for this particular process, the glass layer on top, the insulating layer on top, has a particular thickness. It takes a while to get the chemicals through that thickness so we can get to the metal layer, so we can actually measure the uh, type and the thickness of the metal layer inside. Um, another example of a different chip. This was actually a chip produced by CMU ECE uh, for one of their projects that we took apart. Same deal, you have uh, wires connecting on the outside into the pins. Um, and um, uh, the functionality within this is actually, a, uh, I believe this was their AES, one of the AES encryption implementations inside uh, the grid that you see in, between, in the middle is the metal layers interconnecting and um, enabling the synthesized logic to work. 
Uh, this was a little bit more of a destructive approach to this. We have now the glass removed and we have the top metal layer of that same chip removed, which, which uh, now exposes more of the functionality underneath. We learn from each of these etching chemical etching processes what is further underneath each layer, how thick this layer, what are the components of a particular layer are. Uh, here, an example, here is an example of a counterfeit example, one of the chips we got from the DOJ. So, <coughs> excuse me, the one on the left, so both of them appear to be Atmel chips. The one on the left from the outside is, the, is actually a legit chip that was made by Atmel. The one on the right is counterfeit. Other than some markings on the chip, there is no clear way of identifying what is counterfeit, what is not. So let's take a look inside. You can see that the chip um, on the left, so those same two chips being completely um, disassembled, the one on the left looks entirely different from the one on the right. Clear differences we can see here is that the one on the right is much more complex device. It is, um, it's got copper uh, for all of the metal layer uh, connections. The one on the, and, and there are many components that, uh, that are involved here. The synthesized logic is actually hiding down below in the lower part, and uh, there is some memory in the middle there. But the one on the left, the counterfeit one, is all copper, and the technology is different many indicators that say that this is produced at a different foundry. This was a very simple case where you can tell from just looking at the picture, and that's the reason why I wanted to bring it up, that even without knowing too much, you can tell that obviously these are two uh, different chips. The one on the left is counterfeit. But we wanted to see if we could identify with uh, this with um, uh, chips that are of similar type. So here you can see uh, features that you would be able to identify at different layers. So this is just a corner of one of the chips, a lower left corner of one of the chips. You can see the pads, you can see um, the logic. At different layers, different metals removed exposes you different logic. What's interesting here is that, for example, the thick metal wires that go on the side, those copper metal wires, have a particular thickness that is the requirement of the foundry. The pads, the distance between the pads, and more importantly, the thickness of each layer and the distance in metal, metal, um, uh, metal uh, layer connections that is in the middle. Um, also, identifying features would be uh, the edges of the chip for different foundries contain different, uh, different thicknesses of those, uh, of those edges. Another example, we've taken now the counterfeit chip that we were looking at, and we removed, we stripped all of the metal layers on the top to look what's underneath. And it turns out that underneath, the, the image is not the best under this, um, uh, this projector, but but it can, they contain very basic building blocks there, the squares, the circles um, uh, that, 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 com that, that comprise the, the logic of that simple chip. And then on the right, we see a much more complex example, um, uh, but with a similar, um, used uh, a chip of manufactured with the similar technology where the metal uh, connectors are square the vias are perfectly visible. All of this is measurable and is extracted as part of the pattern. I probably should move on much, much faster at this point as we're probably running out of time quite a bit. So um, there are differences in fabrication that you can see on, um, on this example. Some would, there was some mechanical etching that occurred here, but um, these two chips were manufactured uh, by two similar technology, but manufactured by two different um, 
different uh, fabrication facilities. Um, at this particular way, we could see, in this particular case, we could see that this chip was manufactured by the same foundry, these two different chips manufactured by the same foundry. Giveaway here would be the thickness of, again, thickness of metal layers uh, interconnecting transistors at the top. Um, obviously, different foundries, same technology, but different foundries used on this. Uh, lower end chips, older chips. Uh, again, a zoom in of this, the vias, the metal layers, give away the sizes of those, the constraint that foundries give on those, give away the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the differences. To, so, to complete this, we've done, um, we have a semi-automated way of detecting, extracting these features, detecting these features, and if we had signatures of multiple different foundries, which we don't have because we don't have access to all of the foundries out there, but if we had signature of, the partic of particular foundries, we would be able to use that to um, identify at the very least what foundry a particular chip would belong to based on the features that we extract. Features that are extracted are um, more or less automated where that same chip, for example, is being processed by our software with the patterns highlighted in, a, in different colors in this, in this uh, picture on the right. And these patterns are then measured for their thicknesses, for their sizes, for distances between them, et cetera, to see, uh, to see what they are so that they can then be matched against a pattern that's known for a particular foundry. Um, we've developed a new method for the um, a square area density-based special cluster analysis. This is an extension of previous work. Of course, we did not invent the whole thing, but we've expanded it so that we can do an image that is potentially several gigabytes in size of a very, very high definition picture of the chip. So we can actually do it in parallel. We can do analysis in parallel. It can be actually done in a reasonable time on a decent server. So uh, we've done those improvements in this project. Um, uh, some of the differences I already highlighted earlier. Uh, next steps, what we would like to do is do, of course, more testing with different foundries. I would love to get my hands on more features for particular foundries so I can tell what is what. And um, do as technology gets to be more and more complicated, the feature size gets to be smaller and smaller, and optical microscopy is not going to be good enough soon uh, to do that kind of analysis. And something like SEM or the electronic microscope, microscopy and things like this would also be useful for this case. What's great with the electron microscopy is that it gives you almost like a 3D view. You, from, even from here, you can tell these are the the, the, some of the tests that we've done as part of this project, but very, very limited. We can even see the thickness of metal wires sticking out over there. So without cutting a cross section of the chip, you can see, you can figure out how thick that metal layer is. Once you know how thick that metal layer is, you know that uh, that particular thickness was required by a particular process or by a particular foundry, so you can, you can connect the two uh, instances.